All right, so I'm going to get into why fruitarian is bad. Why eating raw vegan, like 30 bananas a day, gives you such a high phosphorus level that turn your blood acidic and rot your body, rot your teeth out of your head. And the rabbit hole of calcium. All right, so I really got into calcium from trying to get all my th settings on chronometer to reach 100%, at least on occasion. And the only thing, even being fruitarian, basically, that I had a hard time reaching 100% on was calcium. When I got into researching calcium, I read that phosphorus and calcium levels need to be equal or have a higher calcium content than phosphorus. So I read into that more, and apparently, if you have too much phosphorus in your body, in your blood, it's going to end up leaching calcium from your bones and teeth, which are going to degrade their quality, and that's to equalize the pH level in your blood. Some thought to be high sources of calcium are sesame seeds, flax seeds, almonds, Brazil nuts. Based on information that I have researched, flax seeds, almonds, and Brazil nuts are not good sources of calcium. They have too much phosphorus. Some more common foods are watermelon squash with calcium levels of 48 and phosphorus level of 33, so that I gave a score of 15. Sweet potatoes, as some of you may eat, has calcium of 27 milligrams and phosphorus of 32, so I gave that plus 4.5. And I have found that out to have about 0.10 to 0.20 oxalate content. That's 0.10 to 0.20 milligrams. Brazil nuts have 160 calcium, but you thought that was high until you check out the phosphorus levels, which are 725. So that ends up giving Brazil nuts a very negative score. Flax seeds are thought to be a high calcium content food but with 250 milligrams of calcium per 100 grams. But if you look at their phosphorus, they have 642 milligrams of phosphorus. So I give them a negative score of 350. We got cacao with a score of negative 1300 per 100 grams. Some good sources of calcium are collards, turnip greens, dandelion, bok choy, arugula, and kale. Magnesium also is important, but that was in most fruits anyway, so if you're eating high volume of fruits, you're getting your magnesium, but not your calcium levels necessarily. The only fruits I found that had a good amount of calcium are oranges, papayas, and figs. But then I read into oxalate acids, and figs maybe aren't so applicable because they have a higher oxalate content and kind of brings their calcium level about to medium for my math. So then oxalate content reduces like spinach down to like negative. And I don't know, some people say kale is high in oxalate acids, but from my sources, it looks like it's a low oxalate green. Collards has about 45 milligrams of oxalate acid, so that seems like a pretty high one as well. It's about half of what spinach is. Spinach has about 80 to 90, and that's her full grown. And one of the biggest inhibitory factors for calcium intake seem to be phytate and vitamin D. So if you're getting enough sunshine, you can get your vitamin D in pretty easily with about an hour, give or take, of mediocre to full sun. And then bite tape, which is like in brands like wheat, oats, some seeds and nuts, some legumes, and um, when, pe when it goes through processing to remove like the skin, a lot of times it removes the phytate acid which breaks down the phytates and 
our bodies aren't, aren't able to break that down, so it ends up inhibiting calcium absorption in the colon. And same with fats and salts. It's another reason not to eat high fat or, or any salt besides what's naturally occurring. It's because those will require calcium to get eliminated from the body. To offset eating high volumes of fruit, like 30 bananas a day gives you such a high phosphorus level that you're going to need to eat like 100 grams of nettle leaves or about 100 grams of moringa leaves, a little bit more. And that would be like, like 3 ounces, like 100 grams, 3.5 ounces, around there. I mean, it's not that much, but... You know, I, w I was kind of looking for ways to eat less green still. Like most minerals, essential amino acids, vitamins can be found in fruit. But your calcium, if you're eating 20 bananas even. With like iceberg lettuce or butter lettuce, you're not getting your calcium levels even if you eat two, three, four pounds in one day. Then you're going to need to eat two pounds of kale or like one pound of collard to offset the levels, phosphorus and calcium. But some of the better things I found are moringa leaves, which seem to be very nutritious and edible, and nettle leaves, which some people might say aren't as edible, but I found them to be pretty edible. So I'll make a smoothie here with a bunch of, about 30 grams of nettle leaves, which should offset the calcium phosphorus ratios from a nine banana smoothie. One of the great things about nettle is that you can find it pretty much everywhere, all around the world. So, weed. I mean, it's got stingers, but the leaves are pretty much free of stingers. So as long as you don't touch a stem, or the, the leaf stem, you're going to be alright. Nettle is a great one because you can pick it wild, so it's free. Dandelion greens, but you need dandelions have a higher phosphorus, like kale, right, from getting stung. Look at this, there's just a whole massive amount here. They're pretty sandpapery, that's about one of the downsides, but definitely not too bad to eat. Tastes like green peas to me. It's really easy to identify if you don't know what it is. Just rub your hand up in there and it'll sting you. <laughs> Pretty simple. It has an appealing flavor. Bok choy. This is actually the baby bok choy. It's a pretty decent flavor. Here's one that's not so easy to get as much of, and it's not so easy to reach your calcium levels, but if you can get a bunch of dandelion greens, it's also better for your liver. Savory, but that you're not able to eat much savory because it's such a powerful flavor. Same goes with like black strap molasses. I ended up finding that my teeth were more tender after eating a bunch of that, and it's not raw at all. It's like triple heated. I've been up in my calcium intake lately, and I feel good. I mean, I didn't necessarily feel bad before, but I did feel like my teeth were degrading. So here's a document I include, I'm going to include that I, it was basically my notes, and then I refined it to be more understandable and look pretty. And yeah, it's been a few months of research on my part, on and off, just kind of doing it for my pastime. Silica. I added that as calcium for most things, just because I've read that it's easily converted into calcium, 
used for about the same things in the body. So anything that I could find a silica content for, I added that to the calcium score. And then I subtracted the oxalate and phosphorus levels. And then I gave you the result in the right column. And it's got the list. Yeah, I'll show you the greens that I found to be highest in calcium. And things like hydrilla, and molasses, savory. So those aren't really able to eat large amounts enough. But basically it comes back to why you need to eat your greens for your calcium. That's what I've learned. <laughs> so get sunlight, eat your greens, eat lots of fruit. Bananas have a negative 13 result in a 100 grams. You know, if you want to know about a thousand parts per million.